bring the meeting to order. Uh, are there any changes or additions to the agenda as printed? I do have a couple of changes. Um, Sue Lovering is going to be appearing before us to talk about uh, project developing the Arboretum on the Duba Field. Uh, and then we also have uh, recognition from Vermont Emergency Management. Thank you for our participation in the, uh, the training event that we did earlier this year. And then I've got, I, I'll get to this in when we do mail, but I've got a couple pieces of mail that uh, will be better to the board. Okay, anyone got anything else? I wanted to bring up that um, we should address about the student LCPC uh, supporting them in grant application to the state broadband uh, folks about uh, LCPC doing their grant application for student buildings that have options to employ broadband in our town and region. Okay. Uh, that is on the agenda on the Oh, okay. You should have all of that. Anyone got anything else? Uh, okay. Uh, we really discussed communication in the district. Uh, we talked about warranty and merits and how to talk for the company. Communications. You know what? Yes, sir. CUDs. Workshop and also um, getting the inclusivity sign in the foyer and uh, dealing with the foyer in general and rearranging and sprucing up and all that. And I think Linda volunteered to do it. I think someone would take care of them first. That's why I was an art store. So uh, someone would take care of them first. Anyone got anything else? No. Uh, are we prepared to approve the meeting minutes of December 16th? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Got a motion? We have a second. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? So now all those in favor, same by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Most of you got anything else beyond what we got? We still do one. Yep. Okay. Um, I noticed in signing them, there was a ten thousand over ten thousand dollar bill from natives for the flood event. Do we really have a number on how much we spent total? Yeah. Not offhand. Uh, Brian's been taking keeping track of uh, what he spent on it, but I'll have to compile something. Okay. It would be nice just to know how much we're into this for. Yeah. Anybody get, get anything else they want to add or question or? Concerned. We're going to get reimbursed for all that. But well, we should if it gets declared a disaster. Which it is. It, it hasn't received the federal declaration. But yet. it will, I'm sure. If there's nothing else, then we get into your report. And okay. The first thing is uh, the intern description. All right. Well, you've got that in your board packet. <coughs> It's like fourth page in your board packet. So working with uh, NVU sports management program, um, we think there's an opportunity to kind of increase the cooperation we've got going with the college and also help uh, some work study for their their sports management program by bringing somebody in and giving them a couple tasks to do. Uh, in the future, we might do this again. Uh, I think that would be the hope is that this could be recurring with different individuals from the program. Um, this is an unpaid internship. Uh, I know part of the the goal is is one of the outcomes for this would be encouraging the person to write and apply for a grant on our behalf uh, throughout the program too. So again, this is different than some of the things we've tried before. This is not gonna be 
there is no funding for this. The, the only cost to us would be in Lisa's management time uh, looking after the position. Um, you know, the applying for grants, that's going to vary a little bit from year to year, but we're going to really try and keep an eye out for things that they can apply for. Uh, again, uh, it'll, it'll benefit us, but a big part of it is how we can help out the university. Mm -hmm. How many hours approximately? If it's a three credits, it's nine hours a week, and if it's six credits, they do 18 hours a week. Uh, so it's an accredited? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, they're required to do uh, internships. Got it. And then would they come here to our this building? Like it would be an in office? I think it'll be a variety of things depending on what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. So um, currently we have an intern who is through the College Steps program and he does all his work at Rep Storage helping us with our inventory cleaning and all that. And having him there this fall saved us thousands of dollars when those pipes blew because he had spent tons of time in there cleaning everything up, putting it in rubber mates, getting it off the floor. And mm -hmm. that was a huge blessing when we went down to that flood. So. so will you be looking for a formal motion to adopt this job description? Yeah, I think that's kind of the best way that this is. It's not a job exactly, but it's pretty close. Uh, so I'd like to follow the same procedure that we would, even though we're not going to pay the person. Mm -hmm. So a formal adoption of the description would be what I'm looking for. What do you think of the proposal? I mean, did you solicit uh, this? Yes, my goal is that we are the coveted internship for NBU, that they are fighting to come help us for free. And we want the best students who are going to fight the hardest and want it the most to come down and help us out. And they have a program in place up there that's already got all the you know foundations set and there's people administrating it and all that. So I don't foresee it taking that much of my time um, in terms of once it's sort of set out and stuff. And the extra hand would take a lot of the weight off of the community volunteers and what we're already asking of them. And I like the idea of our athletes seeing college athletes as role models to them, being present, being around. You don't think it's going to cut into any of your time? I think it's going to help me. <laughs> I, I, I really think it'll help me. I can think of a ton of stuff that could very easily be, you know, either help, helping alongside me or given over real basic stuff to start and building from there. Um, but, but that was kind of why you were hired for in the first place though, right? Yes. Okay, so. But I have 24 hours to do work that exceeds that. And so I, I like the idea of just having sports management people here, getting their ideas, bringing their experiences, bringing their, you know, they're young and enthusiastic and excited, and they've done all kinds of tournaments. I just like the idea of putting more energies into the program. And anytime we can build a bridge with NVU, you know, is a positive thing. Do you see you being able to make it sexy enough that they're going to want to be here, but not dangerous enough that they're going to get us into any trouble? I think so. And we can definitely put parameters on sort of where they're allowed and what I'm doing. I'm not looking to give away what I'm doing. I'm just looking to expand in areas where young people with lots of energy can help. I guess I would entertain a motion. The so we got, we got a member of the public. Oh, Lord. I was just going to ask a question. I guess that the job description that, that um, you sent out with, with the notice of the meeting doesn't go along with what Lisa is saying. I think what Lisa has in mind is perfect. I think it's great. It's nine hours a week. But the job description is creating a huge expectation that I'd be concerned about. So it's just my caution. The job description, as it's written, is very broad. Uh, and you're right about that. Um, 
it's, I think that we can, we could tighten it up before approval. Uh, my thought is, uh, with it being a little bit broad, um, you know, that we can assign them the task we need to. We haven't done an internship like this before. Uh, we can try and tighten it up and write a more clear expectation. Uh, but we've got a pretty good idea of how we want it to be, uh, and we want to write a job <coughs> description that gave us a, a little bit of flexibility to kind of meet the reality of our needs and their, their goals. Any comments from board members? Any concerns with that? Do there have to be certain requirements in order for them to receive credit? Yes, they have to do it through the college's intern program. But do you have to, did they have to do anything specifically for you? No, you? we have to submit a job description to the intern board there, the group there, that they have to approve it. And then they'll approve it, and then they have an on site person monitoring the student. I would think it's a good idea. I think a kid that's in that program is a go-getter to begin with. They're probably an outdoor person, an athlete, and has an energy level, and a responsibility level. You know, if they're already doing that kind of thing, they've been doing that all through high school, junior high, high school, they probably are well suited for it. Thank you. Again, I look for board members' concerns, or are you prepared to move the description as presented, or would change? I'm comfortable with it. I'll move it. Um, what do you mean with this meeting? You need uh, to approve this job description for a recreation intern position. And we're posting it, or well, however you do that. You're not posting it. Going through the intern yeah, we'll program. go through the yeah. intern office. There and then it's a it's short term, so they would come on for one semester, mm -hmm. and then um, you know if it's a good fit and they're good and all that, they can do a second if needed for their credits. But it's like I figured, try it one time. If it's one semester and we realize it's not a good match, then we'll know that, but we won't know if we don't try it. So, yeah. would it be it's, it's a recreation in turn from NVU? Mm -hmm. I wonder if we can put the position title Recreation Intern NVU. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that could be the, the employment category, essentially. Or, yeah. I think that's fair. We've got a motion on the floor. Is that a friendly amendment? Yeah. That's a friendly yeah. amendment. Do we get a second? I'll second it. Okay, now we have a second. Any more discussion? Yeah, I, I mean, Most makes a good point. It is very broad, uh, and based on the people that will be um, supervising, overseeing the, the program. Lisa and Brian at uh, the conference that you'll be able to focus it and uh, mold this how you need it to to, uh, to work through the program. So I'm comfortable with it. Any other concerns or issues? Discussion. None. All those in favor, seem to be saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Nay. I just have it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Fire service contract. All right. So next up, we've got the fire service contract from back from the village. Uh, this has the final amount. Uh, that the village will be asking the town to contribute. They've made some minor changes from our previous version. Um, but I, I think what were their minor changes? To give me a second, Doug. You didn't send out the change. Yeah. Uh, I didn't have a with the changes that Meredith 
That did go out to everybody in the email, but that didn't go in. Okay. Uh, that went out in a prior email um, when we received it from them, but it didn't go out with a board packet. We have run everything through our attorney on every other little change. Uh, when they came back and made the additional change, did that go back through the attorney? It has not gone back to the attorney. Okay. I wanted the board's opinion on whether it should go out to the attorney uh, an additional time or not. We can't seem to do a thing without going to an attorney. I don't see if this is any different from what we've already done in the past, I guess. Yeah, I'm in favor of sending it because um, I'll, I, I read it over and, and, and frankly there are clauses in it that I don't understand. Um, but I don't think those are the clauses that are likely to have these changes. And one of the things, the basic thing is that the, uh, in paragraph one, the department will provide fire, fire protection services to the town of Johnson. Okay. And I think that they need to, in here, say the town of Johnson. They're really talking about to the town of Johnson, out, the portion of the town of Johnson outside the village. And there nowhere is, it, is that any sort of a recognition, which might work its way into the whole harmless clauses and things like that. Um, that are paragraphs uh, four and five. I mean, I, I, that, that's, you know, if I was going to read <coughs> this, you know, um, I, I would start, we'll provide fire protection services to the portion of the town of Johnson outside of the village because they are providing services to the village and charging the village for that. And, and what they're covered, what we're paying for is outside the village. A am I correct? Yes. You sure are. So you'd be looking for it to be spelled out somewhere in yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. Because otherwise, you, I read this and say, well, when they put out a fire at the Sterling Market, they're working for us, mm -hmm. the town. I mean, I, nobody, nobody thinks that that, that's what the language does. Nobody believes that, you know, but that's what the language says. I didn't see a definition of the town of Johnson to be this, you know, outside, outside the village. Of the and then, then you get to the changes here where we are. I would just, I agree with Mike, send it to our attorney. It should take them 15 minutes. Okay. Hopefully. Yeah. And maybe uh, express that, how you worded in here, the, you know, this is, uh, by definition, is areas outside of the village limits. I mean, even the village is within the town, but this contract yeah. is for outside the village. Is everybody in agreement with, with that? Letting it go to the attorney? Yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll do that. <clears throat> All right. Uh, next up, the Tuesday Night Live committee appointment. So uh, Jen Burton has resigned from the committee. I'm given to understand, but I don't have an official resignation letter from her. But um, when she joined, she had expressed that she was only joining for one year. Um, Actually, just uh, for the first season. Oh, sorry. Thank you. One season, not even one year. Uh, she, she unofficially so. resigned her post one, the next meeting after the last concert in August. Yep. <coughs> so and lacking a formal letter, you would recognize that she has... Yes, oh, absolutely. Resigned. She's no longer attending meetings. No, she hasn't okay. attended meetings since then. And uh, she's unavailable <coughs> for resources. Yeah, has informally expressed that she's... <coughs> Resign from the committee. We will endeavor to get a letter out of her somehow. Uh, to fill that position, uh, Tom Moog has expressed an interest. Uh, and the committee, I believe, 
uh, has communicated that his experience with music promotion would be a huge asset to the committee. That's right. Okay. Motion to accept uh, Jen Burton's resignation and to appoint uh, Tom Moog to Tuesday Night Live. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Damn, I was hoping for a time. <laughs> oh, well. <coughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> Support for yeah. LCPC broadband? Yeah. Uh, next up, the LCPC <coughs> is looking to do a broadband deployment feasibility study. Uh, and they could use a letter of support from uh, the town on their behalf. So move, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I motion. believe Doug has the specific language. Oh, he does? Well, then he'll make You want to withdraw it? No. Yeah, I'll withdraw it. Sure. All right. Thank you. Let Doug do it. He's, okay. He's happy with it. I would move that uh, we submit a letter supporting the LCPC submitting a grant, grant application to the state's broadband innovation grant program for the third round in May of 2020 for the purposes of a study on the most feasible options to deploy broadband in Johnson and in our region. We have a motion and we have a second. Any other discussion? Um, uh, one thing that I feel like I should point out is uh, we did receive a recommendation regarding this from our broadband committee. Uh, that the broadband committee was aware that LCPC is interested in this, that they had, and that uh, the uh, electric co-op is also interested in applying for this grant program. So they will be competing with each other. Uh, and the broadband committee was interested in, in was more interested in what the electric co-op was able to come up with. Uh, but in the but it's an unknown if the co-op will ever be able to. Yeah, but it, it appears that neither of them are, well, LCPC won't be rolling out its right. own program. Uh, and whatever work LCPC does could then be handed over to the electric co-op when the electric co-op is ready and serve to help the electric co-op with their funding and grant applications. And it's a statewide grant program. They funded like three or two, and they're only going to fund, you know, a similar small number. Um, there was recently a study that the for the legislature uh, that it included, you know, a 260-page report on addressing a portion, a large portion that addressed co-ops. Uh, so I really don't know. Where this is going to turn out, where if this is if we're betting on horses and what's best, I don't know what to do here. But I think that uh, uh, Leia is working under a grant that right now and is sending out uh, information every three days, gathering up all the grants and and it's providing a good background to uh, the people that have been interested in this and that's how we're going to get something done. So other than generating information and moving ahead, I, I don't know how to deal with it and you can't steer this one. And there's so many millions of dollars necessary and you, we just have to work on it. You know? And I agree with Doug. I, I just thought it was important to point out that the Broadband Committee did have an opinion on this. but. I think like you said that whatever the uh, if the uh, LCPC was to get the grant, whatever information they got could be uh, used by the co-op. And obviously, LCPC is very well versed and experienced with grant writing and, and administrating them and all that. Are they more competitive because it's a governmental entity versus uh, a private business? I don't know. Uh, they might be, but again, another 
positive aspect of encouraging LCPC to apply and of supporting them is there aren't going to be very many awards. So we'll, our community will have two applications in from different sources. It'll increase our odds a little bit that we get something that supports Johnson, uh, even if we might have one preference over another about which one wins out. Uh, they're both to our benefit. If, if I had to guess on, on who's on this horse race, I would bet on the co-op getting a grant. Because if you look at the last mile places, they tend to be in the co-op's turf. Mm -hmm. But never, and, and you don't, you know, you really want to pick the right horse if you're actually in control. But we have no control because, you know, where you go and how you, how this runs is, uh, you don't want to be piecemeal. You want an organization that goes to the last mile. You want it to be representing your community. You want it to be a company that is uh, accountable and answerable to you and uh, looks to your, rather than just being a private enterprise that's a monopoly that can bill you. Which I got another flyer in the mail for yeah. just a couple weeks ago. For who? A private broad, broadband. I think I saved it. I'll bring it in. Any other thoughts? If not, all those in favor, seem to be saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? <coughs> Merger study update. Okay. So the main update is um, Kent Gardner will be here the 23rd, 24th, and 27th. Uh, to conduct interviews and review our research. Uh, and the 27th will be doing a, excuse me, a public hearing to solicit input. Uh, excuse me, to solicit input on the uh, merger study. Um, Are we, should we be at any of those meetings? What, who's meeting with him? Uh, it will mostly be internal, but uh, if some, members are available for interviews. Uh, we'll kind of set those up as his time fills in, uh, meeting with the department heads uh, for water, electric, fire, and highway are kind of the most time constrained. Right. Uh, so we're gonna get those set up first. Uh, and then hopefully we'll have time to meet with a couple trustees and a couple select board members, uh, and then we'll it's too bad all the trustees and all the select board members couldn't meet with them. If there's enough time, all the select board members would be able to meet with them. We're all in, in town, but uh, it'll depend on our individual schedules. Mm -hmm. uh, but right now, I want you to know that when he's here and the public to know that we'll be doing the uh, public hearing on the 27th. In the evening? Yes. That'll be well publicized. And yeah. Well, what material does he have ahead of time? Uh, we're going to be compiling some financial data for him about the different departments. Um, you know, he has, he's getting us some more detailed list about what he wants to see. But we don't have, I don't have a lot of what he needs besides the financial data. Oh, no smoke and mirrors? Not yet. Meredith's back in the office, correct? Yes, yes. Okay. I'm looking at the term here, and it said that this will be given to us no later than the 30th of June of 2020. It's too bad that we can't have this before town meeting. Uh, it has been two years since this whole process has started. Uh, is there any way that we can light a fire? Under him and uh, see if he can get this for us before town meeting. It could be done before then, but I don't think that uh, the, the in the terms that we described, uh, this was the timeline that they set out that we agreed to. Okay. Um, you know that it would be so many, so long from the state start date would be the length of time he has to complete it. Uh, I understand that, but we could tell him, you know, that we we understand what we've committed to, but, you know, without crowding him, would it be possible 
for us to have it by town meeting. I'll be sure that he's aware of that of town meeting and what that means and you know that that would be a great opportunity for us to make a public presentation on any findings he has. Thank you. The only problem with that is if he sends that in March 1st, we won't have time to absorb it and you know because I don't think it's going to come with a recommendation. It's just going to come with a bunch of pros and cons and, and lay out a bunch of data that we're going to have to um, look at and try to, you know, have a position then that we would go to the voters. And I don't, for him to get that to us in time for us to be prepared for town meeting day, I don't see it happening. Yeah. Then we'll be having a special meeting sometime later on this year. Then. If it came to that, yeah. No problem. <clears throat> yep. Okay, so this was just informational? Uh, and there is an action related to this. Uh, the, you have the contract in front of you, um, and it designates myself and Meredith as the signees uh, okay. on behalf of the town and the village, so I would like your approval for me to sign the contract. What's the board's we pleasure? So moved, Mr. Chairman. So moved to authorizing Brian to yes. sign on behalf of the town. Second. Second. Any other discussion? Especially if we done that already. I think I we did. I thought we did. I think we did too, but with did the contract in front of us. I think we did, but we can always do it again. It doesn't hurt, do it again. I apologize. Then. All those in favor, I, signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? There. You got belt and suspenders now. Yeah. No, I, <laughs> um, I guess I'm going to suggest rearranging the agenda to come back to the budget because that would probably take the rest of the meeting. Yeah, yeah, we can spend as much time as we'd like on that. Yeah. So, um, Light Industrial Park, any update? Uh, Seth and I missed each other on phone calls today, uh, but we're working on uh, updating the grant application for the longer form of the uh, EDA grant to apply uh, under the, as a hazard mitigation related to the ice dam flooding. Okay. You know, the, again, uh, uh, the, we're applying for an EDA grant for the uh, light industrial park, the particular auspices that we're applying under is that our this industrial park and building it up in its particular location will move uh, a significant amount of our economic base from outside of flood restricted areas so right now a lot of the economic base in Johnson is in areas that are threatened by floods by developing in this area we develop an economic base that's resilient to uh, flood flood damage um, so it helps us be a more resilient community and withstand possible disasters in the future. Uh, there is quite a bit of money available for communities to do work like that. Uh, so we're applying for that program and referencing that flood event so that puts us on, under a particular pot of money. Uh, it gets into a lot of details, but I think we've received feedback that Sometimes on these technical ones, we can rush through them a little bit without giving enough details. So I hope we're kind of finding a balance there. Um, all right, so that, that's really where we're at. I'm, okay. I'm meeting with Seth. We're working on a new application. Um, yeah, uh, the, I think at the last meeting, it was in the board packet about the, uh, the, Nexus statement that we have mm -hmm. uh, that wasn't particularly well received. Uh, so that was a disaster declaration that had happened prior to the flooding event uh, that wasn't a particularly good fit for us. So we're going to work off of the ice jam flooding mm -hmm. event. Um, that changes the application that we're filling out uh, for the program. So it's going to be, you know, we're going to redo a little bit of the work that we've done so far, but it's not going to substantially change the project. Good. Okay. Thank you. 
Uh, under old business, did you post the derelict building ordinance? Yes. Okay. So, and do we have to post that in the paper? Uh, we sent a notice to the paper okay. also. Good. Anything else under old business before we move into the items that were added? I guess the first one is um, the Duba field. In the old business. Old, old, okay. Um, I think that's where, that was where I was planning on coming to the racial justice workshop. Oh, okay. Uh, so I have been in contact with uh, Bora Yang about scheduling for that. Um, mm -hmm. January <coughs> is kind of obvious at this point not working out for either of us, so I'm looking for dates in February. Uh, so weekends in February that we could schedule. Um, if we want to take a minute to think about our calendars for... Well, for us, it's pretty open because we're beyond the budget season then. So. Yeah. So uh, February is also, from my perspective, February is going to be a lot easier to make than January. I think what's more, well, our schedules are important, but um, the location. Are we thinking the elementary school? Because that's going to The take elementary a school is a little more likely now that we're later into February because uh, basketball is going to be done. Uh, so the, that it kind of opens the... Basketball is not open. Basketball is not done until March, beginning of March, right? Our basketball is done February 22nd, and then Mini Metro and A is still in there. Oh. And then baseball goes in, in March. Okay. So, so the school may not be an option. Yeah, you have to just find it. Yeah, you have to just find it. Yeah, you have to find it. And there where the school's open. Okay. So I think we should find that. Let, let's work on the, the school and see what they're... Are there any days that definitely do not work for the board? Well, there's school vacation. <laughs> That's the end of February. Right. Yeah. So. Um, I'll be gone the first weekend of February. Won't be available. Okay. So I guess we're looking at like the second, third weekends. Is there a, we're anticipating more people than this building can hold, right? Uh, we're expecting so. I mean, this will be, we're, we'll be doing a pre-registration yeah. so we can get an idea of who's coming. It's not going to be a registered event, but I think it's more of an RSVP than a, a pre-registration. But we we're probably, anticipating more people than we can hold. We probably should have a backup plan if the school's not going to be available. Yeah, uh, we're, we're trying. We've got a couple of venues that we might be able to use besides the school. But, okay. Um, so one's, one step. The bread of an event that Jasmine's doing. Do you remember? <coughs> February second, I think, which is a Sunday. It is February second. Yeah, that's right. It's from Groundhog Day. Right? right now, the school has nothing scheduled <coughs> on February 29th, which is a Saturday. Right. That's the school vacation. It was a vacation meeting. Yeah. I've just been told that I actually will be here the first weekend of February. <laughs> That's tomorrow when I'm available. <laughs> Thank you. So I guess February's pretty open in the first three quarters. The first part, yeah. but. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Okay, but it may be a school issue though. Well, currently, Saturday, February 1st has no rec, AAU, mini metro, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. School what? dances, songs, or anything else. <laughs> <laughs> what about practices? It's the only day that month. That and the 29th are the only days that month. Okay, the first. So let, let's all okay. attack February 1st as a. Uh, I'll try and get that, make that happen. Okay, any other old business, or should we go to the Duba Field? Um, Kyle? Uh, I don't know if the inclusivity sign would be old business or not, but I'm willing to wait till. Yeah, I had that down on the list. Okay. But... So does that mean we're going to go right now or do a field? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, and actually, that's perfect because uh, Sue was here to help talk about that. So we talked a little bit about. And, and Sue brought before the board the proposal for uh, using Duba Field and to build a, an arboretum. Um, that 
prompted a little bit of research, uh, and, and Doug was instrumental uh, doing almost all of the research on the um, the title and the uh, easement for the town. Um, also speaking with neighboring landowners, and the project is uh, looks like it's proceeding ha has the capacity to proceed quickly and strongly. Uh, that there really isn't anything standing in the way, and <coughs> it looks like it's going to be a really good fit for just the arboretum and no longer having to, no longer being forced to consider any kind of uh, dual use, uh, apart from walking paths and uh, trails uh, for the enjoyment and experience of the arboretum. Uh, yeah, it's all looking quite positive. Good. <clears throat> Excuse me, we're pretty thrilled. So I talked to uh, Jim McDowell over at the Studio Center. He said they wouldn't be able to actually discuss this for a month or two, but he gave us conceptual approval. They've been talking about trails over there anyway, and they keep the one road that is there. He didn't see a problem with extending that easement across. It's not uh, anything formal, but he said it sounds pretty good. And uh, we got a bridge donated by Bill Perkins, and your name came into that conversation. <laughs> he didn't make any promises. Um, we have approval from uh, the Lamoille County Conservation District, and it's going along just when we want it to. Good, good. So we have a tree board meeting to make some plans on Thursday at the library at 6.30 if anybody wants to come. Uh, we have a couple of people from Morrisville who are Gung ho to help us. Cool. Here we are. Um, just one question. It's mowed now. Does the town mow it? Yes. yes. Will they continue to mow it? You don't want us to mow over your trees, do you? <laughs> well, around the trees would be good. <laughs> um, probably we would continue mowing it, I guess. Yeah, It would be a decision for when we go out for contract. Probably Probably be more expensive if they're doing around a bunch of things. It's free. Will they be planted in trees? <clears throat> um, yes, but over a period of years. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. I mean, we'll be able to plant three trees. Was there talk at one point about a dog park being down here? Came and went. Um, I don't know. I just remember hearing something about it. Well, this is meeting you missed the dog. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, it was also suggested as a location for if a future use for that park as a dog park was another suggestion. Um, there appears to be, you know, a lot of momentum behind the Arboretum getting that. Uh, and you have to submit a grant application, right? Or you're intending, and that's due? January 17th. Okay, and, and from us, I, I think you're in, you know, will we be in support of you submitting that? Is that? Okay. And the, um, Sue and I met with Bill and Eileen Perkins, and uh, he's absolutely excited about this. Um, and uh, he does have a, uh, there is a small brook back there. He does have a, uh, originally, Roger must have procured it naming him, but might be wrong, a, a heavy-duty aluminum loading dock that's used formerly at the talent mill that's used as a bridge, and he's willing to let us have that and put it wherever we want to. Uh, and he also, basically, you would be entering from, we'd still have, you know, there, there is a, uh, the deed recites an easement, but the town property of the former town offices, when that was conveyed to the studio center, they reserved a walking path along mm -hmm. that. And then you have two more studio center properties there for the conversation with Jim McDowell. Mm -hmm. Then you have um, the Perkins property, and he's absolutely <laughs> delighted to have that. Uh, and he's talked to the, his neighbor, who is... Carl Tory. Carl Tory, 
and evidently you know said that he was up to speed and interested in this uh, and then Bill was really excited and thinks that we you know, realize that this is all we're talking about now is an arboretum but he thinks and this would be consistent with the, what we've done before what the planning did before of uh, the planning commission having a walking path that would come out to route 15 as a loop on that and there would be obviously uh, French property um, and uh, Dean West property in the school uh, the uh, Union Bank you know there are people to talk about but he thinks that would be absolutely lovely, you know, and uh, be an uh, attribute to our community, whether, you know, that's long term, you know, but so, so we had to sort of say, well, this is what we're thinking about now, and, and he wanted us to, you know, turn on the afterburners. <laughs> so you're looking for support from the board on your grant application tonight. What's the board's pleasure? So moved. Good. Good. Two motions, no oh, second. Sorry. I'll be a second. <laughs> we got one motion and one second. Good. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes. Okay. Go forth. Thank you. Can I put it in the paper? Sure. Go right ahead. Could we stop you? <laughs> <laughs> I waited, I waited. We've been talking about this for over a year. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Thank you, especially Doug. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Doug. You found no roadblocks. That was good. <laughs> Vermont Emergency Management. So, Vermont Emergency Management has submitted to us. Uh, you know that they would they have a uh, thanks for participating in the 2009 Vermont Cat 4 statewide exercise um, and this was addressed to Eric but Eric had the suggestion that Nat had led that program so you know, we we're thinking about awarding it to Nat oh. Speech, 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 yeah, speech. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. No lives were lost that day. We got a motion to yeah. present yeah. a dollar and a half and get a cup of coffee. <laughs> so we had a motion from Doug to have it presented to Nat. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Good practice. And now I'd like to turn over my deputy directorship to him. And he's been <laughs> chomping at the bit for it. Yeah. <laughs> he went to training last night. Mm -hmm. okay. Well earned. Mm -hmm. And all of you guys did a great job on that Cat 4, too. It came out well. You got some other mail for us? Uh, two other pieces. Uh, We've received a request uh, for an article uh, to go on to the uh, Lamoille Valley Rail Trail, or to go on to our town meeting uh, that would say, we the citizens of Johnson strongly support the completion of the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail. We urge the governor and legislature to jointly develop a plan that will ensure the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail is completed by 2025. Uh, I don't know if you saw the article that had been published recently in a few different locations, but uh, there's a copy here if you'd like to read it. Um, the, the, the short version is that the development of the rail trail has proceeded very quickly for the last few years and has slowed down. Uh, Friends of the rail trail are trying to uh, kind of speed that back up again. And so they're asking communities uh, who are who use the rail trail to adopt a resolution. Uh, Who's, this is Friends of the Rail Trail? Okay. I, we actually received it from their attorney, but it's on behalf of the Friends of the Rail Trail. And they're asking us to put it for the voters. Right. Okay. So that we'd get a statement from all the voters. So we're not drawing up our articles for a town right. meeting yet, but just a consensus here to 
put it so we'll bring it up when we do the article. Yeah, stupid not to. Yeah. yeah, nothing to lose there. Um, the next one, this is hopefully not going to be our problem for very long, but the <laughs> lot rent is increasing at ship seven. So our uh, mobile home that we currently own in uh, Katy Wynn is the lot rent is going up a little bit on. Good. No. Are we heating it? No. Is it okay not to be heated? It hadn't been heated for the last year. That's just my question. Any so. damage done has already been done. Uh, don't forget that next meeting on the 20th, before the regularly scheduled meeting, uh, we're meeting to auction off the trailer. Right. What, what okay. time is that again? 6.30. Any people uh, express interest? I've had some. Um, if you know anybody who is interested, encourage them to attend. How many do you have so far? Two. Good. So <laughs> we need. Will nope. the taxes hold on? That's right here, my brown pound. I never do. No 5,000 in the blues. You get the whole trailer? <laughs> <laughs> the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be in trailer. Yeah. And the contents. Now we're going to be dragging it out. And the racks <laughs> and the mice. I got big plans. <laughs> <laughs> Stay off Pinterest, Miss Lisa. Yeah. Are you thinking storage? Yeah. <laughs> um, but it, uh, we had voted previously to pay the rent. And I, just had to inform the board that okay. that rent is increasing. Hopefully, we will only have to pay it through January, and then can wash our hands of it. Well, the bare minimum is we're going to get that rent back anyway with the sale of the trailer. Well, we're auctioning it, so. But we need a minimum for an auction. We need a reserve on that. We just can't go for. It. Well, if we owe, if we have owed taxes of five thousand. We're going to be lucky if we're made whole. We had somebody that was interested in it in the beginning of paying all the taxes before we realized that we had to go through an auction system. Mm -hmm. We could have sold that before now and got every bit of it out of it. And if we fiddle around and we don't get all out of it, then we didn't do a very good job, did we? Well, we have to abide by the rules. Yeah, well. But hopefully okay. whoever was willing to pay that much for it will attend the auction. Uh, but, so that's coming up next week, or not next week, two, two weeks. weeks. Yeah. And we want to schedule a meeting for in the one week for budget. We should plan on, <coughs> on meeting for the budget in a time or two. We might need to look into that. Now, is that all uh, set by the state of Vermont, this uh, having to go out for a, an auction? Or? The state doesn't prescribe that we go out for an auction, uh, but for our purposes, that was recommended by our attorney uh, when it came to reaching a decision if we had multiple offers and how do we select an offer when those offers didn't, we couldn't establish who made the offer first. I mean, some people talked to you, some people talked to me. We couldn't establish who had made an offer first, so there wasn't a way for us to. Well, no, well, nobody really asked me when I talked to the individual, and it would have been very easy to have come to the conclusion who talked to who first, if I had been asked. And then we could have easily set it up. Well, this is really going to irritate me if we don't get our money back out of this. When we could have in the first place. Yeah. The, this is where we are. Yeah. The, yeah, the recommendation was to go out for an auction to uh, settle the ownership of it. That, that yeah. sounds like a sound decision. Um, the, the state isn't making us do it, mm -hmm. but the state is restricting what we can recover it for cost. So. Well, moving forward, we need to tidy this up for the next one. 
if there is a next one. So we don't get ourselves in this same situation again. Okay? Yep, we'll get there. Anything else? No. Okay, the next item was something you brought up about communication union district. Yeah, um, there's legislation in the state that allows towns to form communication union districts, and those districts are, uh, it's one of the means of funding broadband, um, and dozens of towns are having this on their warning for a March meeting, and uh, there are, uh, we're not among them, we probably need to look at that. I sent an email to Leah about could we have a placeholder uh, on that, and she said if we were a founding member of a district, the district needs a specific name for the warning. If we want to join an already formed district, a vote to join that district can be done at a select meeting, select board meeting. So an advisory vote from the voters on joining an already formed um, district at our discretion could be an option. What this really means is that, you know, there's got to be some, and there probably won't happen, but there'd have to be rapid action between now and when warnings would have to be generated to do this. So I think we're behind the eight ball on, on this. And, uh, but I just wanted people to understand that the advantage of a communications union district is that it is not, it is not the town's assets that are put up as security for that. There's no liability to the town when they go out and there's are basically um, the private sector comes in and, and buys bonds from these something like that. So there's, uh, you know, I know we're not ready, but I wanted to tell you this is where a lot of towns are moving to have a district very much like a fire district. Now there was correspondence with uh, from Rob Rodriguez who says that he doesn't think that communications union districts are the way to go. But you know, I just wanted to alert you to this and that, you know, Mark Woodward thinks the bus is leaving, you know, because we're not on this yet. Are there any other um, from Wild County towns doing this that you know of? I, it's somewhat confusing to me because this is all over um, the Northeast Kingdom, and part of the Northeast Kingdom studies have included. I think all the towns in the northern tier of Lamoille County except us. Hmm. And, but th that doesn't mean to me that they're in, in, in the district. There is, um, when you form a district, you know, you can have three people or three towns say, okay, we're going to have this district. Then if anybody else wants to join that district, I believe that they have to be approved and get permission to get in. Um, so I don't, you know, this is rapidly evolving and it's, 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 it's a work, it's a workaround on how to fund it without pledging town assets. And it came out of central Vermont that uh, was an EC fiber. And why do you think we were left out of that conversation? We haven't done our work. Who's we? Johnson, Johnson isn't, uh, um, we're not ready, we have it. Uh, there, there were, it seems to me though, that out of the Northeast Kingdom in Craftsbury, they had some main um, fiber optic lines that allowed them to easily to create districts and, 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 and that helped them form. Um, and we didn't have, we don't have that infrastructure. We are behind the eight ball because we're supposedly 70% served by Comcast. There are people that have, are, this isn't my primary focus, but I'm concerned with it. Uh, and uh, I believe that we, 
because I think that uh, unless you can 25 down and three up is, is, is the definition of the standard of broadband, you know, but that's going to be insufficient soon. And we don't have anywhere near that, you know, even in places that are supposedly served. So um, we're, we're in the backwaters and we need to, to work on this. I've been sending out to the board some information, but you know, like I, I get from Leah, you know, there, there's a 260 page report from, from the state government. And then there's this article and there's that. And there's a tremendous amount of stuff. There are, there are talking heads on this stuff that show up at meetings and it's, it's, it's Greek to me. So should our broadband committee be pursuing this? I, I don't know. Uh, Rob Rodriguez thinks that this is not the way to go. I mean, there are, they're first in and covering their territory. Uh, if you slice off half the town, it seems to me the next person in is less, bit less, they're less interested. You know? So it, there really is. A, I don't know. I mean the. If we could turn a switch and, and let the, and have the co-op come in and have the co-op do this, uh, I know Mark Woodward is uh, very interested and has been to a lot of meetings on behalf of the co-op, you know, in in the country, and uh, but you know it takes. You know, I, I suspect in reading the TV news, I think there's interest at the state level and the public service department to to turn the co-op loose, but the co-op has problems because. They have, uh, you know, how are they going to fund it? And they need to have a viable business model because they don't want to go under doing this. And, and uh, uh, yet, yet many, many co-ops in different parts of the country are competing very successfully in this, mm -hmm. which, you know, would we or would we not, you know, if the co-op? You, you can't get your health, you know, we all know what you can't do. You can't get your health records, your kids can't get studying done, you know, if, if you don't have broadband. This is exactly why I thought, I thought, I mean, I understand Rob has a pivot, I mean, Rob's position isn't necessarily the position of the broadband committee that we've established. There's certain no. different voices, very strong, different voices on the committee, which I think is healthy. Uh, but the, the reason that we created that body was because we don't understand this. We don't have time to or through all of these studies, no. that that's really kind of what their specialty is supposed to be. So I think we should be vetting these ideas through them and getting recommendations from them on all of this stuff. Maybe that's a little too optimistic. I think. Maybe Brian has an insight of what's going on on the committee. Um, I don't believe that the committee has met since they gave the report to the select board. Mm -hmm. I think that we can ask them a specific question and that might spur a little bit of activity there. Uh, is there a chair in play? Like, please Rob and Charlie, Charlie, Charlie were co-chairing that. Okay. Maybe, yeah, I mean, it seems like maybe we have a different understanding of what the expectations are for that committee that they are doing. What they're doing is different than what we think they're doing. Well, they, they, or what their role is is different than what we. I think that the the where where we can help them with that is their ongoing role and yeah. what they can do now. Right. You know that they investigated our readiness, what was available now, and if there was anybody that could be attracted <laughs> to come in now. Uh, but they weren't really looking at, so what do we do for a long-term solution? Right. Uh, so I think that we can help them a little bit with that as a goal of, you know, that we really need you to do the research and, and work on. Long-term. Yeah. Term. yeah. <clears throat> the, the organization that, the Mount Mansion, or the, the, that's, that's coming in that, that coming in doing that part of town? Uh, that is... Is it Mansfield something? It's MC Fiber. It's I MC forget what... Fiber, uh, yeah. I forget what the M stands for, but it, it might be Mansfield. 
Well, what we haven't had is looked at the community, the cooperation between the communities. We haven't looked at, we haven't, you know, the Vermont Electric Co-op is just step, beginning to, to step into this, you know. I think we need to have a global look at this and not, and, and we need to determine if we're solving, if, if temporary, you know, or partial solutions are, you know, help or hinder the, the broad long-term solution. Yeah. And it's hard to know what the broad long-term solution is yet. Charlie, you know, expressed a couple times to me as he and I were sitting in meetings that he thinks the co-op is our answer. I don't know that that, that that is, you know, workable. And maybe, you know, I, I think that that would be ideal if they could be funded. Um, there, I, I know from talking to Mark that 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 uh, you know he felt like the board was favoring this at some point, but it's not a slam dunk, it's not unanimous, I don't, it's probably a slight majority. If it is a slight majority, then they have to get the legislature to go along with it. Yeah. Which is, it's, it's, it's You're more interested in the carbon tax right now. Anyway, um, so I wanted to, I guess it's useful in order to, there's been no discussions um, <clears throat> Dan Noyes and Matt have been to some of these meetings. Uh, Charlie Gallanter has, has attended meetings. I'm talking about the meetings that, that are running out of the Hyde Park office where they, Leia is bringing in people and, and taking advantage of Hyde Park having an operating committee that's looking broader than our committee is. You know, So they, they are looking at, they're going to have, they had the state, uh, I think Rob Fishman, might be his name, or Rob Fish, uh, who is now the person whose job at the state is to help people. Blay has been throwing <coughs> us information and, and getting getting uh, Rob in, getting, uh, he had a couple other meetings, and, uh, 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 but we don't have, our committee is not really actively part of how we, they aren't thinking what we do as a group in a broader community. They aren't thinking CUDs. And I don't know that they necessarily should be. All I know is that it Where do you want to go to with this? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I don't want to take too much time. I, I'm, sorry, I'm taking too much time. <laughs> this is really, really important, you know. Yes, it is. We're not moving, and... Uh, but how do you want to move? What do you suggest that we move them? Uh, I think we should give them a, a broader. Uh, we should ask them for 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 directions on how we get to an endpoint on and, uh, on the options that are that are potentially available, and that they give us a a proposal as to how we should go where they should go. Okay, you want to share that, Brian, with them? Yeah, then they're going to need some different members with different visions. Maybe. So it looks that way to me. I mean, we have a committee. We should. We well, start by them, taking it to the committee. Let them know what where thoughts are. And it's basically what <clears throat> defining their mission. Yeah. I mean, they, they say it is to go to the last mile, but the solution didn't seem to be there. No. So do we invite them in at the next meeting, or does Doug or, or Brian take that to them? I think that we can take it to them. I think that our next few meetings are going to be Pretty busy. Yeah. busy enough that... And I don't think there's value for the whole board to pick up a select board meeting. I'm, I'm bringing this up about the warning because I think we're too late for it, but I think, yeah. I, I think it's good to know that we're too late and we need to get started. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're gonna follow up on that? Yep. Uh, the inclusivity sign. I thought, I thought that was supposed to be in the four year long before now. Uh, yeah. I know, I don't know. So I'm I asked sure. Jazz, the last I asked Jasmine about it was before snow flew. It was down at the oven and she said it was going to somewhere gone in the to get treated. Okay. And then I drove by the next morning and it was actually in somebody's trunk on the way. So. I think Jasmine 
Right. If you don't know that, shows me my kind of information. Every kind of time I come in the building, okay. I'm surprised it's not here. Well, we need to make room for it in this building. That's the other piece. We gotta get rid of the cow. Yeah. We have to get the cow outside somehow. No, don't get rid of it. No. Relocate. Well, that's what I meant. <laughs> well, well it can come out. apart apparently. The base. Put it in another location. The base. <laughs> Cold storage, outside. maybe. I, I guess on this here. The cow? Double doors to slide it out. It doesn't fit. We don't have double doors anymore. We don't have double doors anymore is the problem. But we, we can always we suspend it. A chainsaw. Yeah. That would be funny. A suspended cow. Yeah, that would be funny. That's not a bad idea. Um. <laughs> Might make the paper. <laughs> I was the only one that voted against getting that cow. <laughs> <laughs> well, the none of the rest of us were here. It should, so, it's yeah. supposed yeah. to be. Nobody else was here. I want you to know, Eric, if I had been here, I'd vote against it. Will that fit in the elevator? Okay, no. So we're but gonna... <laughs> it, it can go outside. It's supposed to be outside. It's treated to be outside. So we need to find an outdoor location, either in, somewhere on this property or Put it amongst the trees when you get that all squared away over there. Yeah. Could be. People might take pictures with it. A grassy pasture. <laughs> take it That's back true. down to Church Street. Just like going yeah. down to, you know, with the airport today, they have Ronald McDonald sitting there. And then there you go. You have your picture taken and tells go. you where to yeah, stand and everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they can do that. You can get the Arts yeah. Council to maybe re. Or give it back to college. <laughs> we could put it up by your store, actually. Uh, well, if he could paint it, <laughs> I don't think he likes the plaid with the spiral motif going on. We could ask the village if they would let us put it on the village green. I think it should be somewhere Or we could public. put it out, we could put it on our patio here. I just heard that. Yeah, that, that I just was from... the wrong door to get it out. Yeah, <laughs> well, we would have to try and take it apart to get it out, but we're going to have to do that to get it out wherever it goes. The village green would be why not? Yeah, then it'll look agree. more like, again, we're trying to make it look it like something other than a people would stop parking lot with it. They would. It would be Johnson's claim to fame. And if we could just get food up here, we could go. Right. Actually, it's more It's been hidden all these years, and it's, now it's finally coming out. Yeah. It'd be our mascot. Kids, the, kids love it. It can be very interactive. They can, how do you stabilize it to make sure that it's not tipped over, that it's safe? Yeah, that's because true. Because kids are going to climb on it. They're going to climb on it, they're going to fall off it. Well, let them fall off it, but they can't tip it over. <laughs> there are plenty around. I mean, there's one outside of Picasso. Right. Still, they're, all, they're, they're all over. It's, it's yeah, just, there's got to be a big thing. We don't have to read that. Village Green sounds really good. Yep. Our highway crew is pretty good at uh, fabricating things. I imagine that they can... Public works crew. Thank you, our public works crew. We uh, have to get permission from the village, right? We, we do, to locate it on their property, and I uh, suspect that it's here, that it might be, is it, do you know if it's jointly owned, or if it's just the no. town? No, the town bought it, the village. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, custody battle. Oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> the cow. You're really short-sighted. You didn't see the potential. Well, uh, <laughs> I still don't see the potential. <laughs> <What a bunch, laughs> <right? laughs> <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> the budget. But, our public works crew is pretty good at fabricating things. If there's a, I'm imagining that we could just attach rebar or something to the oh. hooves and sink it into the ground. <laughs> the first thing you're going to have to figure out how to get it out of here. Yeah. And I got a chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> they probably won't let me do it. Okay. Hmm? Oh, they won it, I think. Fifteen hundred. Oh, we paid for it. Yeah. Oh, was it fifteen hundred? Oh. I think that was a okay. hundred. Well, like six minutes of my trees. Could we auction it off as a fundraiser for the new operator or something? I, I say that goes with the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to remove that. With your trailer, you get a free No. Okay, so can we find a, can we really lock in a date to do that, Brian, with Public Works, so that then we can get a few volunteers with you, Linda can get in? I about access to the building on the weekend. Yep. Can we get in the building on the weekend? It's uh, usually unlocked. Often can. It's often unlocked, but we can make arrangements to 
uh, like temporarily third, give you. The first and third weekends, the sores are upstairs. Oh, right. Oh. First and third. You were going to do some painting or something on that. Mm -hmm. I can't, I, there's no way I can do it during the week. No way. I keep thinking I can, but it always fills up. Yeah, we can make arrangements to get you keys for the four year yeah. part. The, the, yeah, the office and everything launched with a separate key and, and alarm, so. Uh, okay. Okay. So as soon as you let us know when the cow's out, then we can. He's on wheels at the moment anyway, right? Yeah, he's yeah. movable. I, I, I suspect that if, I'll make sure that the village is willing to let us locate it there. Right. And I'll talk to the town about, uh, the, the public works crew, about what they would do to make sure it isn't easy to tip over and I secure. Think they could do it this winter anyway. Probably not. I'm thinking my solution for it would be to put rebar on attach rebar somehow to the bottom of the hooves and then sink the rebar in. And you couldn't do that right now. I'm sure they're clever enough to figure it out. Yeah, I, I would also just do whatever solution they thought was the best. So then we come up with a general bullet. <laughs> move, move, right? Move, move. <laughs> we feel yeah. like. Don't know what we do Okay. Okay. <laughs> I have a quick question. So all the brochures and all that stuff that's down there in the racks, are, is all that stuff stay down in the lobby? That, the brochures could use to be cleaned out, but there is uh, some information the there. that. board stuff. Can that just all be anything that's just throw out anything that's outdated? We can throw out anything that's outdated. Uh, I moved all of the employee information inside the office. Okay. Uh, so there's not much left out there that's that legally is. required to keep. Okay. Uh, we can give it a good once over, but yeah, the, there's. Stuff as well. Yeah. You want some yeah. good water, Matt? I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, spring water. Uh, yeah, we, we should be clear of legally required notices in that area. Uh, that I moved those out. Okay. okay. We All beat right. the cow to death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just want forward. We've yeah. been. This is another one of those things that we keep pushing down the line. I mean, you said it was getting varnished or something. We were. Yeah, it was getting a ceiling Probably coat. Probably or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if there's, well, I knew it was, but I, if there's no other business, we'll back around to the budget. All right. Okay. Thanks. Do you want to deal with the rec first while Lisa's here? I, I see that's a separate sheet. Oh, here. Uh, that's the skate park. Uh, oh, that's the skate park. Uh, okay. Uh, Never mind. I have included that on a separate sheet because. Casey did provide that uh, early enough, but I was having some printer. I was having some, having some problems printing it with the changes that the formatting changes that she made, and I had to take her changes out. So I have to reincorporate her back into this. So, are there any groups, committees, boards that have not submitted their budget yet? No, I've, re I've received all of our uh, committee budgets. I'm awaiting um, unemployment insurance and one or two other outside groups. But No, your budget items are more health and all that. Is that an increase from the previous year? Uh, I have to check on a couple of those, but we have received a couple requests for increases. Uh, the one in particular you asked about, the moral health, yeah, that is an increase. Um, we have been informing them that they need to get a petition, circulate a petition, uh, follow our standard procedures for increases in appropriations. Good. How many of the nonprofits are seeking increase and in doing petitions? I don't know, Rosemary, if we received any petitions. Not uh, yet. From current ones, but we have for some new ones. Oh, we got some new ones. Yeah, that Memorial uh, Investigative Unit. Okay. And if there's any 
possibly another one that Rick Stabansky is working on. How much is that one? Do you recall? That'll be an. Those will be articles, articles. so they're not right. going to be part of the budget. Good. Um, but those articles, they are. I, I've heard from uh, probably at least half of these, so I've heard from five or six. They're having increases, and they're five or six. Five or six have asked about our process for asking okay. for it. Because if they have a petition and they become an article, we need to pull them out from our budget, or they could. Is that okay? Unless you agree to put it in the budget, right? But um, well, I was my in my plan on how to deal with it if they had submitted an, a petition for an increase was to leave them in under the old amount, and then the article would amend it to the new it, increased amount. It doesn't amend our budget, so. In theory, they could be entitled to both the article approved by the voters and whatever the voters approve for our budget. Okay. So that's why we always take them out of the budget if there's an article coming before the voters. Okay. Because the article will have the new amount. All right. Any Is there anything that's jumping out at you at this point the board needs to focus on? Well, our big areas of concern, well, right now I'll give you the kind of the good news and the bad news. Right now, our total budget is up by 2.8%. So on our first pass, we're rising a little bit under 3%. Okay. Uh, there's a little bit more honing in that we can do on a few of these, but I, I'm not expecting a huge change from that unless we go in to change it. The Substantial increase is coming from uh, things that we don't have any control over. Um, our public safety makes up over a quarter of the budget altogether, and that's going up by 4.4%. Uh, NEM is pretty significant increase this year, going up 13.3%. Um, law enforcement, the patrol budget is going up 3%, dispatch is level funded, uh, and fire is going up 3.7%. What's going on with them? Were they in here to, to, to yes. explain that? They, they came right there. No, they had a I, meeting. I, I no, them didn't the come in. Okay. Yeah. And I sent you my notes on the yep. meeting, and, and part of their increase is conversion to uh, like like we did with the village, and or related to insurance. It's it's switching, you know, to a different accounting period. Did you understand that? And I sent that to you. Uh, yes, mostly. All right, uh, you tell them that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I thought we did, I get, did. we did get some. We, we got a, a little explainer after Doug went to the meeting on it. But uh, yeah, as I recall, this they're switching the financial year and calendar year, and that's a part of their increase. But I, I, as I recall, I was, to me it was about half of their increase was related to that. Yeah, that was, I believe that, that was their claim. And that was to put it in line with the town's fiscal years, correct? Because they weren't before they were calendar year? Was that? I didn't bring my notes. You know, I, I have a file with notes on okay. Yeah. I'm not so, understanding how that translates into a 14 percent, or into a 13 yeah. percent increase. So I don't, uh, we don't have to settle here, but I'd like more information on it. All right. And see if we can. I mean, they've been really tough to. 
push back on the past, but it's a couple of big increases in a row, I think, from them. It has been several big increases in a row. I mean, at least for the Sheriff's Department, we're going to have a conversation. And mm -hmm. Well, they're willing to come, you know, they're willing to come in. Uh, they're <laughs> yeah, now, yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, because they want us to understand it. And, uh, you know, I don't have my, I understood it when I was sitting there two sure. months ago. Will Thanks. you bring your notes next month? I, I, I sent them to. Yeah, we, I, uh, we've got Doug's notes. Okay. We can and then spend a little bit more time on this or we can come back to it the next week. Are the only ones that fund them? Oh, no, no. it's well, five towns. Well, from this area and then up in Newport, I, I, don't, I don't know how many towns there is. And it, they help. Oh, I see. So we fund all of them, not just Johnson. Mm -hmm. We fund their whole organization. No, we. Theoretically, we fund the share of their organization that responds to Johnson. Lamoille County. Based on population. Yeah. So our rate to them, they work out an overall per capita rate, and our rate is based on how many residents there are in Johnson. So it's how much of their... And so, and then they get reimbursed insurance wise as well. That's yes. part of the problem, because that reimbursement from the uh, feds has been decreasing. Mm -hmm. And so they're, we're having to supplement oh. more of that. Oh property taxes. But that 13% increase, percentage-wise, would be the same for Hyde Park, uh, Waterville, Eden, Belvedere. Modified by population. <coughs> yeah. The dollar amount's not the same, but the percentage is the same. The, the fee per person per year, if you wanted to say, you know, do you want, you know, would you pay this to have an ambulance available to, you know, or likely available? You, you paid at a drop of a hat. No, it's just when it adds up based on population. You remember when Hawaii tried that years ago? Mm -hmm. they, tried, they, they tried a system where they charged per person per year. I think it was like $50 a person. Something like a that. Year yeah. To have insurance for animals, and you wouldn't pay for the animals if you oh, use yeah. it. Hmm. Yeah. Thinking that it would come anyway. Yeah. If in the highway section, you know, one of the, thank you, Matt, for sending out this priority sheet, but one of the huge items in our priorities that certainly affects the budget is the gravel pit. Do we have something in this highway budget that would address new, uh, looking at new uh, gravel pits, if we have to start purchasing gravel? We have, uh, we've been increasing our gravel and stone, and that goes up a little bit more this year, uh, but that is between that and a little bit more for uh, construction projects on pit maintenance and research, uh, that's where we're, we're mostly trying to address those. Because the pit maintenance, we're going to have to do that anyhow. But uh, and we that's increased over the last couple of years that we spend more money working on the pit to yeah. get what's left out. Mm -hmm. So getting material from the pit has become more expensive than it was in the past. But we don't have any money anywhere for when we have to reclaim that. And no, we don't have a reserve fund for that's reclamation. That's going to be huge. It's going to be a multi-year project for us to. If we if we haven't reclaimed it at the point in time we acquire another gravel pit, and we did this gravel pit under under the exemption municipal exemption. Our acreages, is it possible that we, our acreages could, could uh, uh, it double yes. and prevent us? It is. Uh, we could end up uh, past, depending on what we acquire for a gravel pit, a, a new gravel pit, we could end up 
exceeding the municipal exemption uh, while we're closing down one pit if we have to open a new one. That's going to be tricky. Yeah. You know, our claim and our argument is going to be that it is that we're not operating two pits, but we'll see if they agree with us or not. Let's see if there's no gravel there first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I understand. Before I ask that question, I realized that I haven't seen the analysis yet. Or well, I don't know where we're going with that. But anyway, okay. Got a lot to do there. And we. I mean, I keep hearing it moving a little bit. If we have two years left or three years left, we don't have a real firm. No, we don't. Uh, it, it's at some point, it's not going to be worth it for us. What we're more likely to run into is at some point, it's not worth it for us that we're putting too much work in to get stone yeah. and gravel out of it. That's more likely than <coughs> us actually 100% running out is that we'll get to a point where it's just not worth it anymore. Um, you know, the, all, all soil has some sand and gravel in it. It's just, at some point we're moving, you know. We don't really own that gravel, but anyway. So, right, we don't own the mineral. Right, right. Yeah. so it's not like we have our own piece of property and pull out product and not have to reimburse somebody every time we take a load out. But right now it's costing us a lot to get one load because we're having to move so much material. Just right. yeah. We're still saving money on it, but we're increasing, we are increasing the amount of gravel and stone that we buy uh, because we occasionally need more uh, on short notice and also to help draw the life of this out a little bit longer. And how much gravel is up on the Jewett property? I don't know. I don't know. Look, we didn't do uh, borings up there, but we did get a soil analysis. I had to look into that. Might be better off to turn into a gravel pit because there's gravel up there. All right, uh, so I'll dig in a little bit more about the gravel pit. What's going on? Eight? No, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say in 1819, the actual sand, oh, we spent 56000 We're estimating for, for this 1920, uh, Thirty-eight thousand. Why does anybody remember why that was such a big? Eighteen nineteen was, uh, if you remember, a, a very long and icy winter. Okay. Uh, that was a really rough year for us, um, and we had to go back to buy new loads several times throughout the year uh, when it wasn't planned. Uh, so going into this year, we had a relatively high stock of winter sand available. So okay. we're thinking that we might go out one more load, but we're not too likely to have to go out for multiple loads. Uh, that's you know making predictions about what the rest of the winter is going to be like and when the spring's going to come. But based on evidence, uh, we we're pretty confident that we're not, we don't think we're going over this year. Uh, but last year we went over by quite a bit. I am estimating the salt budget up a little bit for the end of the year, but that's mostly based on the price of salt uh, continuing to rise just incredibly fast. Um, it's gonna be worth it for us to talk again about possibly doing brine. Uh, for our, our, our roads, uh, that that might be a little bit more cost effective. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to require a little bit upfront cost, but it's... It's not good for the automobiles in the town of Johnson. It's not. 
Uh, but it's what piece of equipment was slated for this year to be replaced? Well, you're going to redo the you had to do, redo the capital equipment budget, right? Uh, we I am in progress on yeah, we got the new dump truck just the other day, right? Yeah, we got the new tandem recently uh, for new replacements in the upcoming year. We didn't have it in this. Pattern. Yeah, we're good for this upcoming year. Okay. But the increase we're seeing is from the last fiscal purchase, the tandem we just received. Well, that's not quite true. We do have one replacement coming up this year that I'm anticipating us kicking down the road again is uh, our screener for the gravel pit. Oh, yeah. Um, that um, I'd like to put that off for a little bit. Uh, there's also the apprehension uh, that the state is pushing us pretty hard to no longer use uh, screened gravel. They want us to use uh, crushed manufactured gravel. Think what sheds off into the watershed. Uh, the crushed gravel will, less of the crushed gravel will wash away. Yeah. But the fine material, having some of the fine material in the gravel does help bind you and make for a good firm roadbed. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, if it's all, you know, when it's washed screen gravel, it's all little round rocks. So they slide off each other when they get wet. Uh, but your crushed gravel sometimes is uh, rough on tires too. It is. And people, you know, get flat tires and we had some of that stuff used on some of our back roads and several people got flat tires a day at the house used. So, you know, we got to look out too for it. We're, we're getting a lot of pushback from the state uh, in our new uh, road and bridge standards that we had to sign. Uh, we agreed that we will only use processed gravel on our roads from now on, which includes screened. Uh, but there, that was an amendment that they, we were able to get in that uh, it, changing the language from crushed to processed. Uh, that the state wants wants to go the direction of, of using just crushed, and we're we're resisting that where we can. Some of those people don't live on the back roads either. And if you're, you know, we'd have to weigh it with whatever the cost of a gravel pit is and getting the material out and then hiring a crusher to come in and crushing it for us versus buying the material from NATO. I mean, yeah. it might not be that far apart. Okay. All right. NATO's not last forever. No, no. No. They're depleting. What's up with line 150 on general insurance? It seems to have just gone away. Uh, wait a second. Can we merge that with something else? Insurances went up in general, but no, that's our. I'm going to have to double check this. What's the possibility when we're having our but that's a discussion? We can't project it up on the wall right up there. So anybody that's interested in seeing the budget can see it at the same time we're seeing. It. Uh, we could. I also did print extra copies of the budget if anybody okay. would uh, like to see a copy. But it would might be easier to project them. Yeah, we could start projecting them. Yeah. Um, it should not have gone away. We are still paying for passive. Uh, uh, that, that's our, the general insurance is our uh, passive insurance uh, through the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Yeah, so that should be so populated. That should be populated, and also it looks like a typo 
in the end of year uh, should not be 80,000, that should be 50,000. Uh, there was no change in our insurance for the current year. All right, because that'll make a big difference on the bottom line. Yes. Um, I'm not anticipating a significant increase on that one, but I. It's not going away. I, it's not going away. <laughs> <laughs> Bummer. Um, you know, we have a good history there, uh, so we are. You know, we have experienced a little bit of a discount, but. Yeah, not going away. Are you just interested in this or is this? I'm just saying. Okay, yes. cool. I just want to make sure. Yeah, no, thank you. You're very welcome to be here. I just wanted to. <laughs> uh, two other things to note. Um, I, I got the Tuesday Night Live budget, but I'm breaking them out from single lines that used to be just one incoming line and one outgoing line. Uh, we're going to get a little bit more detail on how Tuesday Night Live is spending their money. Uh, but there's not going to be, it's going to continue to be a self-funded organization. The, the town won't be contributing anything to them. We'll just be having more detail about where the money goes. Yeah. Um, similarly, the bread oven uh, has been doing a lot more fundraising than anticipated. Mm -hmm. uh, so they... There was lines for the bread oven, but they were zeroed out in the past because we weren't anticipating them doing anything. So there's now, now the bread oven has lines with money in it, but the incoming money and outgoing money is matched because the town isn't contributing anything. It's whatever money they bring in, they'll spend. Mm. Uh, but we've got a very very rough estimate on what that money might be. Uh, but again, as long as they're matched to each other, it's not going to cost the town any money. It's just a little bit... I find it a little bit easier to read if it's not zero. Line 167, interest on the light industrial park. How come we are... So far off in our estimate. Uh, Rosemary and I are digging into that. Uh, okay. We should know that dead on. Hmm. No, nope, uh, I've got the upcoming year for that line marked also because uh, the amortization sheet that I used. Uh, <coughs> estimates those. Well, they shouldn't be estimates. That should be. And Brian Krause's. And the years, that's too high for that, I think. I. For 167? I, I've got it marked. It's going to be close to the 2700. You think it's going to be more like the 27? Yeah, closer, much closer than that. 40, you got 14 right there. Yeah, yeah, you've got 1484. For the first half. For the first half, and that decreases each month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got it flagged to, for review, uh, so I'll, I'm going to go back and review it. And uh, Brian krause has gone down through his... I've sat down with Brian. I'm going to sit down with him again tomorrow. Okay. Um, He, uh, under summer roads, has no capital projects planned? Uh, that one, we've got one out. Uh, I've got to reach out to the Better Roads program and get some feedback from them about when we might hear. I'd like to hear and be able to include that in our budget. 
uh, if at all possible. Is that where we would uh, plug in for Rocky Road? Yes. Should we add something in there? Because we would have a match, especially if we we're eligible for that mitigation. Yeah, uh, I think that we should probably also do an estimate on what we'll spend on Rocky Road. And uh, I think the, what was it, the consultants said 50 to 75,000, something in that neighborhood. And that was 2014, so I don't expect the prices have changed too much. But I'll, I'll do a little review on how they came up with the price and see if there's anything in there. We have said. a little adder to it. Yeah. And then the uh, the match that we currently have is, I don't know, 80 to 90 percent? Uh, from FEMA, it's not. Well, FEMA will do 75. The state will kick in some amount. Yeah. And we're left with the balance. And I think we're the... You know, it's 80 to 90 percent funded and we have to do the yeah whatever it is yeah, I think I think it's 80 percent 80 so or it might be we might even be at an odd number like 82 point I think it is something. odd numbers but we could uh, we should be able to get a fairly good number on what yeah we've got the previous estimate and I'll, I'll review that. Two nineteen. That was uh, end of year forty four thousand eight hundred one. That majority of that was on the work on this building, right? The majority of that was the work on this building. What was the amount that came in for the town share this year? On that? I'd have to grab the invoice for that uh, to know about that particular project offhand, but. Uh, the majority of that was this building. Um, Rosemary, do you remember if Holcomb House was here? That would have been this. Oh, was that in this line item or was that on? Uh, that would, are you talking about this current year? Yeah. yeah. I think that was around 15, wasn't it? Well, do you remember what line item the Holcomb House got assigned to? Was it this one or uh, I think this Holcomb one. House Repairs? This one. This one, okay. So you're saying the town share is only 15000 For the Holcomb House. For the Holcomb House. So we're talking approximately 30000 for this one, 29000 Yeah, about 30000 for this one sounds right mm -hmm. to my recollection. So it's a total of $60,000 that we spent this summer. Some of that's going to come out of the reserve fund. Yeah, that's uh, something else that we'll want to consider as we're looking at this is we had planned on taking $25,000 out of the reserve fund uh, to pay for a portion of the work on this building. Um, the, we might want to take out a little bit more to cover the overage uh, that we had on this building and the unanticipated costs on the uh, Holcomb House. But we are hitting that fund pretty hard. So that porch and that damage on the side of the building cost $15,000. But that fund does grow some amount with whatever is left over in our line item for small yep. equipment. And, and we made a contribution to it at the end of the year also. Uh, so it's not in terrible shape, but that's going to be something we want to consider. What's the uh, emergency management reserve fund at? It's indicating a, a line 400. I don't have the uh, cash on hand at the end of this is not accurate. Oh, OK. This is uh, just kind of information that I have really done. Try yeah, so we'll something. go line by line yeah. next, next time. time. Yeah, yeah. Th this is yeah. first draft. This is because uh, we could cut some money out of that one. And we know 80,000 got added in. Thank you to that. Well, we could have gone on the shirt. Um, 369 is a purchase large 
Yeah, 40%. Which, uh, sorry, you say the number again? 369. Yes. We're just by a screener. I do mean, not following what that is. Uh, I'll review that on the capital fund, but that's uh, that's based on a prescribed That was the plan? plan. Yeah. To increase 60% in one year. Uh, that's why it operates out of a reserve fund, is, is that it's not very even year to year. Well, there is a money in, money out, but I think a good point in that is if we're not anticipating a purchase, why is that so high? The only thing that should be out coming out of there is payments. Something to look at. I mean, you're yeah. going to be looking at that schedule anyway, so. Um. Yeah, no, I want to get a closer look at it rather than hazarding the guess. Yeah. So we're starting at a 2.8%. We, we're we actually sitting better this year than we were last year. You know, you got to add 80,000 to that. Just thanks to Matt here. 50,000. 50,000. Oh, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, well, then you're talking another percent then. You're going to be talking 3.8%. Instead of two points. Yeah, we'll have more cash on hand though. Mm. We haven't done cash on hand and yeah. we haven't no. done any yeah, thing with the uh, So that could be kind of a wash out. Maybe. I mean this is our first run at it, which is that's not bad for the first run. Yep. So, yeah. Any other expenses haven't popped up yet. Yeah, I mean if we're looking at some gravel pit mitigation or uh, you can consider it going around. Yeah. I Have a seat. Sorry. He's always the GW takes her on the effort okay? <laughs> yeah. They got money, so we could uh, go down there and get some free gravel. You still have your gravel pit up in the heat, right? I got not much left. You don't? Pretty well exhausted. It's just as well I am, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's going to be a biggie for us. Is our gravel pit uh, some two to three year lifespan left? We got to reclaim it. We've not got a good lead on a new gravel pit yet. Is that your last one you have? No. They uh, I know your gravel part pretty well, really. I've done a lot of work on there. Yeah. Yeah. It's too bad we can't dig the gravel out of the rivers and reuse it. Well, but that's a perfect recycling project. From River Road, <laughs> there's a lot of gravel if you could just come from River Road right into where our gravel pit is. But the railroad would bike path. Bike path. Things were so much easier when we could do that. There we go. Yeah, I think it would reduce the phosphorus going into the lake. Do really make a big difference. They didn't but deal with the flooding either when they were doing that. Give us more money. Yeah. I'll go to bat for it if you want to do it. I'd love to do it. It's never gonna happen. That's a losing battle. <laughs> nah, I never say never. <laughs> it's never gonna happen. It has to be a major regime change. It's not Montpelier. It's Washington. You want, me to you, you want me to tell you how that happened? Have time or is it yeah, I want to hear it. Barry Calhoun, if you guys know rivers at all, he was the god of the rivers. Oh, yeah. Mom. And he's a nice man. He gave um, Villeneuve permission to take the gravel out of the river down by the, where the Jericho uh, little park is there. Yeah. You know? And he got a call from uh, somebody in Essex that said that river is blue. He went up there and he was in the middle of that river with his big dozer and stripped it right down to the clay. And Barry told me, he said, that's the last time anybody's going to dig in this river. And he, he had the power to change it. Yep. So that's, and I used to complain to him, why can't we dig it out? He told me, this is why. Don't blame me, blame him. <laughs> 
that's that's how it changed. That didn't take too long. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I got this cookie. I gotta finish. <laughs> well, good night. No. Good night. Take care. Good night. Well, I think we're wrapping this up. We got nothing else on the agenda. Does anybody got anything they want to bring up? When are we meeting again? Next Monday. We are. If everybody's available. It'll be a budget meeting, dedicated budget. This is your opportunity. We, we very seldom have time at the end of our meeting. No, but, we're, but we love it when we do, so. <laughs> we have a hard stop at nine. Or for the old folks. We're so used to ending at night that yeah. we don't know what to do with ourselves and we stop. Okay. I think next Monday is the school budget. Planning a school budget meeting. So that's probably one we should get people to go to. Absolutely. That's where your taxes go. Majority of them. Yeah. Our congregation will be a fraction of what they spend. Yeah, we're gonna have to have a hundred thousand dollars for Steam adjourned.